I've been flipping pages since I could remember That told me I had to be within the lines of two degrees and nine to five And I've been working after work since last September Working after work, yeah. I stay up late on the weekdays late on the weekdays. I never tell when we say oh. I never wanna look back And wish I could have been I never got no regret The hours I've been putting in So take a chance on faith your mind's a boss, please Take a chance, take a chance A chance on faith To take a chance Take a chance on faith To take a chance I never wanna look back Take a chance Take a chance on faith Take a chance on faith All right, hey everybody, and welcome to Zenfolio Live. I'm Robert with Zenfolio Customer Success, and I want to say thanks for joining us today on the live stream. Today, we're going to be talking about how to get the most out of your portfolio. So we're gonna go over some things like portfolio organization. We're gonna talk a little bit about SEO, show you how to make sure that you've got good titles, keywords, good categories set up. We're gonna talk about call to actions in your portfolio captions, go through gallery settings, and then we're gonna go into visitor navigation. So, so showing you the best way to set that up so that it's really easy and simple for your visitors to navigate through your different portfolios. Now, if this is your first time hanging out with us, make sure you say hello to us in the chat. Let us know uh, where you're chatting at from. It's, of course, we are always glad to have you guys that come back week after week and hang out with us. So make sure you say hi to us as well. As always, I've got Richard hanging out, taking care of you guys in chat, who apparently got a little overexcited about the broom challenge this week. Check it. <clears throat> I got the broom game on point. <laughs> who else stood their broom up this week? Be honest. Don't be ashamed. Throw it out in the chat. I put a video up on my Instagram with the, video, the broom standing up. If you did it too... Say something in the chat, let us know. But like I said, we're going to be talking about how to get the most out of your portfolio and um, just going through all those different things. Do have some quick announcements really quick. So just really two things I want to remind you guys. Starting in March, again, I said this last week, but starting in March, we're going to be revamping Site Review Tuesdays in the way that we do it. So we're going to be doing things a little different. We're going to review more sites on Tuesdays, and we're actually going to do those reviews live instead of posting the pre-recorded videos like we've been doing. So coming in March, make sure you stay tuned to that. That also means that we are going to reopen up the site submission to get your site reviewed. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you check that out. And then, hey, a really quick, just friendly reminder for all of those, all of us who have significant others who may have forgotten, not saying that I did, but tomorrow is Valentine's Day. So I wanted to throw out a quick, friendly reminder that tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Um, so make sure that you've got that all set up and you haven't forgot not saying that I did, but remember, tomorrow's Valentine's Day. All right, uh, let's see. We've got Jean Cote. I'm trying to say your name right. Sorry if I get it wrong. Hanging out with him. He said, he said hi from Southern California. And then um, I can't see you. My chat's like really far away. 
I'm not going to try to say that name, but said guilty. So yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I put a video up on my Instagram of me balancing the broom. It was pretty funny. But uh, if you guys did too, say something in the chat, let us know. Let's go ahead and jump into today's topic. All right. So like I said, what we're talking about today is we're talking about your portfolio and about the best settings uh, for organizing your portfolio. All right. So first of all, we're going to jump into talking about organization and how you have this set up. So here we are in my Zenfolio account right over here. And usually whenever you create an account by default, some of the questions that you answer kind of determine the pre the way that things are set up. Right. So it kind of creates this little portfolio folder. And let me zoom in so you guys can see that it kind of creates this little portfolio folder in here. And then inside of that, based on the questions that you ask whenever you set up your account, it probably created some sub galleries in here with um, different titles, depending on what you answered to the questions that when you created your account. Now, if you've gone through completely customized this um, and change it, that's fine too. We're going to talk about some different settings and stuff here in a second, but this is basically what it looks like when you first create an account, you have a portfolio folder with different galleries in here. Now, if you guys have questions as I'm going through this, whether it's on topic or not, make sure that you throw those over in the chat. Richard's going to be passing those questions on to me. I'm going to be getting those guys, those questions answered for you live. So make sure that you put your questions in the chat. You don't have to wait till I say, okay, now it's time for questions. Go ahead and put them in there and I will answer them once I'm done with this. But let's talk about how you organize your portfolio. Okay. So first of all, when you're looking at things on this side, this is your view. Okay. This does not reflect what your clients or your visitors see. This is your view. Now it can be reflected on the visitor side. If you want it to be, you can set it up to match perfectly, but this is really for your view. So what I always tell people to do is to organize this in a way that makes sense for you. Organize this in a way that it's going to be easy for you to navigate organize it in a way that you're maybe used to. Maybe you already have all of your folders and stuff set up on your computer in a way that you're used to. Organize this in a way that you're used to doing it. Personally, I like having this portfolio folder with these sub galleries breaking up my different portfolios. Now we're gonna talk about some of the settings on here. So first of all, when you have a portfolio folder, right, there's some specific settings you wanna make sure that you have applied to this on this side of things because um, we want this, that, that gallery and that group to be um, public. We want it to be easy to be found. We want it to be shown in search results, all kinds of different things. We want this to be really SEO friendly. So what I recommend doing is going to that folder right out of the gate and just checking a few of the settings applied to that folder before you kind of move on down to the galleries and different things like that. So we're gonna click right here. We're gonna go up here to access. And then we're going to make sure that this is set to public, which if you don't see a lock icon on it, that means it's set to public, but then go down here to search and make sure that this is set to allow your content to be publicly searchable. That is what is going to let Google, Bing, Yahoo, all of the different search engines index the content of that folder or index the content of basically your portfolio, right? So once you have that set up, make sure that you save that. All right. Now, I definitely recommend using different settings for your clients group. Obviously, you're going to want to have storage in your account where it's accessible only by the client, whether they have to enter a password. These are the settings that I would recommend using for your portfolio, your publicly facing things. Okay. Now, once you have this set up, one thing that you have to keep in mind is that the way that these things are titled on the back end matter, right? So a lot of times we just leave these as the default. We leave it saying portfolio. We said that we photographed weddings. We said that we photographed engagements. So these galleries were kind of created for us and we just kind of leave it set to be the default. And again, the way that these are titled actually matters. It, it, it helps your SEO. Google sees these titles. It helps it understand what this is about. So anywhere you can alter the text of anything, you want to take advantage of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to start up here on the folder and I'm just going to show you really quick, go over here to details. And then you might think about retitling that portfolio folder. Now I actually don't have this portfolio folder directly accessible. And I'm going to show you what that looks like on the visitor side here in a little bit, but 
it still can be found in search results, which again, we want, because we want people coming to our portfolio. So we're gonna rename this to something like, uh, I don't know, maybe you'd say Raleigh um, Wedding Photographer um, Portfolio. So anything like this, that's gonna be a little bit more search friendly, because again, these titles matter. Now down here as well, you can have a caption and what you might want to do is just write some a little bit of information in there about you, about your photography business, about what you do. Maybe you're just going to write something like, hi, I'm a wedding photographer. I'm focused on, I live in Raleigh, North Carolina, and um, I shoot these specific locations and just different information like that in that caption, again, to help this portfolio have better search con or search results, right? So once you kind of have that information in the portfolio group, we're gonna save that. All right, you're gonna see it change over here. And again, this is your view, right? It's not necessarily gonna reflect on the visitor view and we'll talk about that in a second and I'll show you what all that looks like. But you wanna take those same principles and apply that down to the galleries that are inside of it as well. So again, the way that these galleries are titled matter. So instead of just saying wedding, this is where you might go and you might actually put in like Raleigh wedding photography portfolio or something like that. So again, clicking on details, going over here, changing this title from just wedding to Raleigh uh, wedding photography portfolio. Or maybe you wanna put a little bit more information in there than that. You can put some information in this title to really help out. Now, when you get to the gallery level, you have that caption option right here but then you also have keywords and categories. Now, I want this to be really simple for you guys, right? So I don't want you to go in here and think that you have to put in tons and tons of hours of work, keywording everything, making sure that all this stuff, that is definitely going to be helpful. But if you're just starting out, right, don't make this into this huge undertaking. You just need to take some simple steps to get yourself started because doing something is better than not doing anything because you feel like it's too much work. So you're going to go in here and just write a quick a quick caption in this wedding gallery right here or in whatever portfolio you're in. Okay, so in there, some of the things that I recommend including is, again, location. Location information is really going to be helpful. So I am a wedding photographer in Raleigh. And then... After you put a little bit of information in here, you need to think about this gallery caption because when visitors are actually viewing this wedding portfolio, they're gonna see that gallery caption. And one of the things that you can do is you can put a call to action on this right here so that when people in your portfolio, they're looking at there, they're seeing this caption and they're gonna see a link of the call to action. We want them to contact us, right? So what you're gonna do is after you put a little bit of information in here, just kind of add some space and put something like, uh, click here to contact me. Or whatever you want this to say, click here to chat about your upcoming wedding. Interested in having your wedding photographed, click here to reach out to me, something like that. Put some text in here as a call to action, highlight that text, and then you can use this link tool right here to link this to whatever page you want. Now, this would be where you would link it to your contact page. I don't remember the link to my contact page right off the top of my head, but you can always hover over a website, go to built-in pages. Let me just open that in a new tab. And you can actually get the contact page link right here. So here is contact. I'm just gonna copy that link address, jump back into the previous tab, go back to my link tool, highlight this, and then we're gonna to link to it right here like this. And then if you wanted to open it in a new tab, you can. Since this is my built-in Zenfolio contact page, they're not gonna be losing any of my navigation. So I'm gonna leave that to open in the same tab and we're gonna hit okay. All right, now we're gonna go down here to the keywords. And again, like I said, keep this simple if you're just starting out. Like if this is not your thing, if you don't feel like this is something that you really need to invest a lot of time in, just do a little bit, keep it simple, and then do more as you have time. So we're gonna go down here and just keyword this really quick. So you could do uh, just a single keyword, wedding, right? Or if you wanna do a keyword phrase, do a comma, then put a quotation mark. And let me zoom in here so you guys can actually 
kind of see what I'm writing. You're going to do a comma, you're going to do a quotation mark, and then you could say Raleigh wedding photographer. All right, and if you specialize in certain kinds of weddings, maybe you specialize in outdoor weddings, maybe you specialize in large Catholic weddings, that's information that you wanna put in these keywords. Again, keep it simple, try to get at least three in here, maybe a combination of two keyword phrases and one keyword, but try to get at least three or four things in here just so you have something in here and then you can come back and add more later. Now next we're gonna go down here to the category section right here and then just drop this down. And there's lots of different categories in here to choose from. So just make sure that you're choosing the appropriate one. Um, I'm gonna go with lifestyle and recreation. And then I think somewhere down in here is weddings. Let's see, weddings at the very bottom down there. There we go. And then there's even more categories here. So you can have just weddings and weddings. Now, once you get all this saved or set up, just click that save button, all right? So that is saved and we've done that for the gallery. All right, so now the next thing is the images, okay? So making sure that you categorize these images, you keyword these images, and again, start out simple. You don't have to go in here and get crazy and keyword all of them with 30,000 keywords. Just take it simple, little steps. Something is better than nothing, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this and then um, we're gonna go up here to details. And then each image can have its own title. For portfolio galleries, I recommend giving these a title that have something to do with the image, right? So I might say up here, um, outdoor bride and groom portrait or something like that, just something that has to do with the actual image and not a file name. Now for your client galleries, I usually recommend leaving the title to your file name. That helps when they're proofing it. It helps if you need to talk back and forth about a specific image. For portfolio galleries, every spot that you can manipulate the text benefits your SEO. Putting a title in here that actually means something for the image is gonna be helpful. Then again, the images can have their own caption and they can have keywords and alt attributes as well. Now the alt attribute can be the same as the title. You can change it if you want, but you're gonna to wanna to come in here and do the exact same thing that we did for the gallery in here, right? Keyword it, give it a category, and then save it. Now, what you can do is instead of keywording one image at a time, you can keyword multiple images at the same time. So if I click on this photo, if I hold command on a Mac, or I think it's control if you're on a PC, you can actually select multiple photos like this. All right, and then you can go up here to details and then go in and keyword those and write captions if you wanna do it that way as well. Again, start out with something simple. Doing something is better than not doing anything at all. So make sure that you do that, okay? Now, once you have done this, all right, the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually go into the gallery and make sure that this information is showing because it's nice to have all of this on the background, but search engines nowadays only look at information that visitors can actually see. So if this information is not showing up, then um, you need to make sure that it shows up on the actual page so that when Google indexes it, it says, oh, this is information that visitors can see. This must be important. We're gonna index this information and we're gonna rank this page accordingly. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna click on a gallery and open this gallery specifically up in Customize View. So to do that, you're gonna right click on Preview right here and just open that in a new tab. I like to work in multiple tabs, that way if I need to bounce back and forth, I can, it's really easy. And so I'm just gonna jump down here and we're gonna jump over to this next tab. And then on this tab, we're gonna to go to Edit and edit page and that's what's going to let us go in and manipulate this page and change the settings now one of the things that i recommend doing is whenever you're doing this i recommend whenever you're creating gallery settings there's an option up here that says save as default all right so let me show you guys right here there's an option right here that says save as default and why can't, why is that bringing that up so far? One second, let me fix my little window here. 
it's taking it up like way too far. There we go. All right, so there's a little option here that says save as default. You're gonna to wanna to save your default settings for your client galleries because hopefully you're gonna have a lot more client galleries than you are portfolio galleries. And in Zenfolio, you only get one gallery default setting. And that means that that's the settings that your galleries use. Any gallery that you want to appear differently, you have to go in and manually modify that gallery. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is go into your portfolio galleries and you're not gonna save them as default because you probably don't want all of this stuff showing on your client galleries. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to options and then we're gonna go right here to page elements and then let me zoom in here so you guys can see this a little bit better. All right, here we go. So we're gonna go to page elements right here and then we're gonna start setting these different elements to show, okay? So we're gonna go page elements, we're gonna go to caption, Make sure that caption is set to show. You can align it if you want to center align it, you can do that. And then categories and keywords, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that that is set to show. Next, you're gonna go down to your thumbnails page, all right? And we're gonna make sure that that title is showing because we made sure to title our portfolio images something that actually means something rather than a file name. And again, that information is gonna be helpful for SEO. Now, most a lot of this other stuff I would probably hide, like all of this stuff, to be honest, I would probably hide this. Um, but we want to make sure that that title is showing. Okay, so now I am going to just go ahead and save those settings or apply those settings. So let me go down here and let me get back so you guys can see this. We're going to go down here and hit apply. And now you'll see that that caption, the categories, the keywords, all of that stuff is showing. All right, so here is the caption. Here is that call to action that I was talking about. And then if I scroll down to the bottom of this page, this is where the categories and keywords are gonna show up. So we know that as photographers, right, we don't want a bunch of keywords and stuff plastered all over our images. All of that stuff shows down here. So it's still visitor viewable which Google takes it into account, but it's not plastered all over your site. Okay, and just really quickly to show you how this call to action works, if I click here, this is gonna take me to my built-in contact page, right there. All right, let's go back. And um, a couple more things we'll talk about here really quickly is how do you want your portfolio to function when people click on these images? There's different ways so that it can function. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is go back up to options. On the thumbnails page, you have two options. You can open it in the photo page, which is gonna take it to a new page with the image really big, or you can do dim the lights. Preferably, I like dim the lights mode for a portfolio, just because what it does is it brings the image up really big, nice and centered there in front, and then they can close it and keep browsing, and it doesn't take them to a different page. It just brings up the focus on the image. So that's what I prefer. All right, okay, um, so after you kind of have that set up for your portfolio, you're gonna to want to um, talk about portfolio navigation or visitor navigation, right? Because usually by default, the portfolio link is actually linked to this portfolio. And I've talked about this a lot on site reviews, right? Where it goes to a folder and then the client see the two thumbnails for the gallery and they have to click on which portfolio they wanna view. And it's just a really cumbersome way of navigating through portfolios. So just to show you as an example, if I go over here to portfolio, um, if I go to that site menu really quick and we just edit this and I say, I want this to link to, um, let me go back, that's portraits. Let's go to portfolio. If I change this and I say, I want this to link to just my portfolio folder, then let me show you how that now functions. It's, I don't like this navigation. I think that it's really, uh, again, it takes a lot of clicking around. So here's portfolio. And now if I click on this as a visitor, it takes me to this view where I have these two different galleries that I then have to click on. So if I wanna go view weddings, I have to click on here and navigate it here. If I wanna go and view engagements, I have to click over here and go view the engagements gallery. Okay, and then once I actually get in there as a visitor, if I wanna go back now 
and look at that other portfolio gallery, I then have to click back on portfolio and then click back onto this gallery. So it's a lot of clicking around, especially if you are a very diverse photographer and you have a lot of different portfolios showing here, right? It's gonna take your if your visitors a lot of clicking around to actually find the information that they're looking for. And so what I recommend doing here is making sure that you have this set up as a drop down menu so that it's really easy. So we're gonna go right over here to portfolio and I'm just gonna click this. We're gonna say show drop down menu. All right, and then we're gonna hit update. And then once we do that, we're gonna come right over here. We're gonna go plus and we're gonna say weddings. Now notice that I am not naming these in the name of the gallery. It's really important to note that these titles can be different than what the name of the gallery is. However, keep in mind that these titles for your site menu items also do affect your SEO, right? So you wanna make sure that you're, you're naming these appropriately, but again, you wanna take space into account as well. You only have so much space. So I'm just gonna say wedding, uh, let's just say wedding portfolio, and we'll hit enter. Then we're gonna link this menu item to a group gallery or collection. We're gonna hit select. We're gonna go in here and expand the portfolio folder and then just grab that gallery and directly link it. All right, um, so next what we're gonna do is just add one more. So we're gonna hover back over this, hit plus again, then we'll say in engagements. All right, link this to a group gallery or collection, select that inside of the portfolio group, hit update, and then let's reload this preview. And now I'll show you how this navigates differently. It's so much faster and so much smoother. So now as a visitor, if I come to your homepage, I can now just go to portfolio and I have these drop down options. So if I go to your engagements portfolio, I can go check it out. I can go browse through it. And then when I'm ready to go look at the weddings portfolio, instead of having to click there, click again. Now I can just hover over portfolio and click on the wedding portfolio. All right. Now, once you have these changes set up, once you have all of this information in here, the last step that you need to take is to make sure that you publish these changes. Because again, anything that you um, that you change on this side actually does not go live until you publish it. Now, if you're still working on the site, if you have some things that you need to finish and you wanna do it another day and you're just not quite ready to publish this, you can just leave and all these changes are saved back here in the kind of the sandbox version of your site. But if you are done and you're like, okay, this is good, I need to publish this, you can just go right up here, click that little publish button, and that's gonna publish those changes out to your actual live site. All right, guys, and that is five simple things that you can do to help you get the most out of your portfolio. Really, it's about putting in that information to help optimize your SEO, and then just making sure that the visitor navigation is really smooth and really easy for people to get to the information that they're looking for. All right, so we're gonna take a quick break. If you guys have questions, make sure you're getting those in the chat. I'm gonna take a quick break, be right back, and I will answer your questions. Hey guys, my name is Richard. I'm with Zenfolio Customer Success. Happy Thursday. I hope you guys have been having a good week. I hope it's been a lot more clear and nice weather for you than it has been for us in North Carolina. It's been rainy all week. Um, but regardless, uh, we really appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with us as we always do every Thursday um, live. But if you're watching the recorded version as well, um, we also appreciate you too. And we give you the opportunity to ask us any questions as well. Um, there'll be a link below the description uh, where you can click it. You can ask us some questions and we will answer them the following week, uh, which is what Robert will be doing right now for you. All right, guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab some questions. So the first question I got here is from let's see if I can say it right. Gwynny B Photography says, I want to be able to be searched better and add more to my page, but it limits adding things that Zenfolio doesn't offer. So I'm not 100% sure um, what kind of things you're looking to add in there. Um, is it Gwynny? 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 Um, 
but you can definitely, I mean, if you're looking for better search results, right, a lot of the stuff that I just showed you will really, really help. Making sure that you're utilizing those captions and keywords. Captions, guys, I'm just, I say this like every live stream. I feel like captions are one of the most underutilized features in Zenfolio, and they are so extremely powerful. But Gwenny, if you could let me know a little bit more specifically what you are trying to achieve, whether it's just better search results, Again, a lot of what I just showed you will really help that. The key is, even though you go in there and keyword everything, you have to make sure that that information is actually showing on your site, right? Because if you don't set it to show, then Google is not going to take it into account and then it's gonna just ignore it and all of that work that you've done is, is gonna basically be for nothing if it's not showing. So again, captions, keywords, titles, think about what you're putting in there and then make sure that that information is set to show so Google actually takes that into account. But if you'll just clarify a little bit more in the chat, I'd be more than happy to try to come back and give you a, a more solid answer. And guys, if it is all about SEO, there are lots of video tutorials on our YouTube channel that go over this. Um, there's one specifically that says how to get your galleries to perform better in search. You guys go to our YouTube channel, do a quick search for that term. Uh, just type in like SEO or type in optimization or search on our YouTube channel. Lots of videos will come up on that topic as well. But great question, um, Gwenny. Thanks for uh, dropping that in there today. All right, let me grab the next question here. John McCormick says, does caption keywording help SEO even if you do not display the captions on gallery pages? Great question, John. I think I just answered that. Um, but again, just to kind of reiterate you guys, Google only really looks at information that visitors can actually see, right? So just like, like a little history lesson, uh, back in the day, you used to be able to go into your site, put a bunch of keywords on there, make it the same color as the background or just not even have it to where it's, it's visible. And then search engines would read that and they would think, oh, this page is all about this and they would show it in search results. And then people would go to that page and they're like, well, this isn't about that at all. Somebody just wanted this to be Found. So what Google and all the search engines now look at actual visible content, content that, that your visitors can actually see. So if you are adding gallery captions with a lot of information in there, again, that stuff needs to be visible for it to really help your SEO. So hopefully that kind of clarifies that. Great question though. I love all these questions that we're getting about SEO. Guys, it's really simple to come in here on Zenfolio and do some things. Just make sure that it's showing on your site so that it actually gets indexed and read by search engines. All right, let me grab another question really quick. All right, this question is from Katie. She says, how can I display transparent PNG images in my custom pages? Great question, Katie. Lots of people ask this question. Uh, there's pretty much just one way of doing it and I'm gonna show you, well actually there's two ways, but I'm gonna show you um, the way to do it if that PNG image is in your Zenfolio account. All right, so what we're gonna do is, um, first of all, if you're wanting to display a PNG image that you have uploaded to your Zenfolio account on a custom page, there's a couple of things that you need to do first in order to actually get it to display like a PNG file, if it has like a background cut out or something like that. So I actually have, uh, I don't know if it's a PNG, I think it's a GIF, but I have a GIF file uploaded in here. Let me go down here to website assets. and I believe it's under my photos in here. So let me just show you guys this really quick. If I go to my photos, um, this image right over here is a GIF. It's an animated GIF. It's basically the same concept as a PNG file. The steps are exactly the same. Right now, you don't see the animation because we're viewing the preview image that Zenfolio created when we uploaded this, which was a JPEG file, right? So in order to show this image on a custom page and actually see it like it was meant to be seen, whether that's with transparency or with animation, there's a couple of things that you're gonna to wanna to do. You're gonna first, you're gonna to need to enable downloading of this image. So what I always tell people to do is put this in the gallery, make sure that gallery is private so people can't access it. Then also go to that gallery up here, go to access, go to search, make sure that it's not included in any search results, okay? And then after you have that set up on the gallery side, 
go to that individual image and then you're going to need to alter its settings. So you're going to go to that image, you're going to go to access. First of all, in order for people to be able to see this photo on a custom page, you have to have the photo set to public. So it's inside of a protective container. We're just creating a backdoor link to the photo. All right, so we're going to set it to public. Next, in order for us to access the PNG or GIF version of this image, which is the original image and not just the Zenfolio generated JPEG file, we need to go to downloading and make sure that downloading is turned on which again is another reason why I recommend setting that gallery to be private. After you've done that for just that image, you can click on the image right here, go to actions, and you can go right here to share. And it's gonna pop up this little window. And what's really cool is that we actually have the HTML already written out for you to actually embed this on a custom page. And that's right here. But I want to show you this first. So if you go to the direct link to the images, these little, these right here are the, these right here. My Oklahoma just came out. These are the preview images that Zenfolio generated, right? So if I click on this, it's going to show me a link to the image and the file extension is JPEG. So that is not going to have the animation or the transparency if this was a PNG file. Same thing all the way down to large photo. All right. So if I just really quick, if I just copy this and I open this up in a new browser, we're just going to be seeing the JPEG image just standing there. But if we go down to original photo, the file extension changes. If I copy this, paste this in my window here, now we're seeing the animation because we're actually seeing the original image. So that is the key is making sure that you get that original image. All right. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and get the embed code because this is what allows us to actually embed this image on a custom page. So you're going to go here, pay attention to the image size. Again, if you use one of these sizes that's not original photo, it's going to give you the JPEG file. So if you're not sure, you can just scroll down and look at the file extension right here that says JPEG. So that's how we know this is not the original image. We need to change the image size to original photo. And if you'll look, the file extension changed to GIF. All right, so now if we click in here, this is actually the HTML code that we need. We can do a command C, control C, whatever you're on, copy it, hit close. Now we can go embed this on a custom page. So we're gonna go up here to website. We're gonna to go to custom pages. I'm gonna open that in a new tab, jump up here, and then we can just go to um, a new page. And I'll just say PNG, actually it was a GIF, so I'll say GIF test. I'm just naming the page. And then I actually like to do this in the source section so we can click on source, go down here, paste that code in, and then undo this. And now that GIF, or if it was a PNG file, is actually there showing in the way that it was meant to be seen. Now, really quickly, if you use that embed code, if you go back, it is actually set to link back to that actual image. So right up here, this ahref, I think that's how you say it. That is the where this photo will go if somebody clicks on it. I don't want this photo going anywhere. I just want it being displayed. So all you gotta do is kind of remove this code right here. All right. And then you're just gonna remove the code right over here. Go back here, image is still displaying. And then just here, I'll show you really quick, save and preview. <laughs> so now we're looking at the page with that actual image on here. If it was a PNG, it would be transparent. If you have it set up that way, um, it's a GIF, so it's showing the animation. So that is how you guys do that. All right, great question though. Um, super useful. One of the things I do want to point out really quickly, guys, is going into the source code on a custom page will let you do custom coding. We help you as best we can, but since custom coding is so different and can be very, very 
what am I trying to say? It can be different depending on where you copied it, where it came from, what you're trying to do. We will help you as best we can, but if that code is not working, if it's causing weird issues, chances are we're just gonna say, hey, we're really sorry. We really wanna help you with this, but it's custom code. And unfortunately, we're not able to help you with this. You'll need to just remove the custom code. All right, great question though, Katie. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, hopefully this was helpful for you guys. All right, we got like 22 minutes left, guys. Make sure you're throwing those questions in the chat. Richard's gonna be passing those off to me and I'm gonna keep answering questions. I need some water though. All right, let's go grab uh, our next question. All right, next question is from Sharks408. Sharks, what's up? Thanks for jumping in here and hanging out with us. Said, is it helpful to add the venue that I shoot weddings at often into my SEO information? 100% absolutely, it's, it's more than helpful. So this is a great thing to do and I'll show you why it's really good to do. So let me get this out of the way here. So first of all, let's say that you are on a preferred vendors list for a particular place, right? Or maybe you um, just have really good relationships with a few different wedding venues in your area. If you put that information in the um, caption, right? So if you go to that gallery, go to the details, and you go over here to the caption, you can put, hey, I am on the preferred vendor list at this place, or I'm at the preferred vendor, vendor list on this place, or I like to, I love photographing weddings at the Raleigh Rose Garden, um, blah, 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 blah. Putting those specific locations in there, again, that location information is gonna help your SEO. But then if you take it one step further and you put in a link to those different venues, right? So if like Raleigh Wedding or the Raleigh Rose Garden is like your place to shoot weddings and you go and you put that in your caption, but then you link to it in your caption. So let's just say like, let's go find the Raleigh Rose Garden really quick. Raleigh Rose Garden. We'll go find their website really quickly. Um, let's see. I don't know if this is it, but here we go. So we're gonna say this is the Raleigh Rose Garden website. I'm gonna copy their link, come back over here, and then I would just say um, Raleigh Rose Garden and say something like, uh, this is real, I really like to, um, to photograph weddings. Select it, use the link tool, paste that in, and then since that link is gonna take people away from your Zenfolio site, have it open in a new tab. Now, why is this helpful? For one, again, it has specific location information in it. Two, right, you can now reach out to the Raleigh Rose Garden and say, hey, I just wanna let you guys know I've, I've linked to your site from my wedding portfolio. So I am you know, sending traffic your way of brides and grooms or future brides and grooms, right, that are looking for maybe a place to get married. You're sending traffic to their site. Can you guys do me a favor and link back to me, right? So it's just a better way of also providing value to that venue, so hopefully they can be sending people your way. And it's just a really good way to build that relationship as well. So I would definitely, if there's like specific locations, if nothing else, it's worth, worth mentioning the location just for the SEO, but if you can link to the site and get a link back from their site, that's even better. All right, great question though, Shark. Thanks for throwing that in the chat. I really appreciate that one. That is a really good one. Okay, um, let's see. It looks like Jenny specified a little bit more. I want to personally customize my page outside of the templates offered. Gotcha. Okay, that clarifies a little bit. So you do have some options. We'll have to work within the limitations of Zenfolio, but you do have some options. Now, I'm not going to have a big, a, a lot, a lot, a lot of, I'm trying to say the word. I'm not going to have enough time to really deep dive into showing you all these different options. But what I will say is this you need to go into Customize View and you just need to start playing around. So we're going to go hover over website, right click, Customize Website. We're going to get that opened up in a new tab. All right, so I just have it opened up in a new tab. We're gonna jump into that new tab. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here. And when you get started with Zenfolio, we have presets that you can use, right? 
You guys can change these presets at any time. These are not the final destination of your wedding, or of your wedding, of your website, right? These are not the final destination of your wedding, or your, why do I keep saying wedding? Final destination for your website. These site presets are a way to get you guys started, getting you close to something that you really like. But, and what I always tell people to do is just pick something that is close to something that you like. Once you have this close to what you like, you can go in and customize it. So what a site preset is, is a combination of a layout, right? So a layout is right here. Layouts control the composition of your site. Now you cannot go in and manipulate the code in these layouts. You can't drag specific elements around and move them around. But what you can do is you can go in here and choose different layouts and try to apply them differently and see which one you like. So there's lots of different layouts in here, right? So that's the first part. The second part's gonna be playing around with the themes, right? So themes are what control the fonts and colors of your website. And you can go right here, and we have lots of pre-designed themes that you can play with. So you can click on these, try all of these different color themes out. They're gonna change the fonts, the colors that are used. If you don't find anything that you really like, you can actually go in and customize the theme or even create your own. You can create your own using your own colors, lots of different options. I don't have time to go in and really go through this. I've done it several times on the live stream, so you're gonna wanna look for anything that has to do with theme designer, customizing your homepage, those things are gonna get you started and really show you what you need. But really, the best thing to do is just come in here and play around with it. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of a place to start to where you can go in here and feel like you have some freedom with different things that you could do with your website, working within what we've provided there for you. All right, great question though. Um, let's see, let me grab another one really quick. You guys have some awesome questions today. All right, uh, let's see, next question. Ooh, a long one. Okay, Natasha Curie says, if my videos are for free to my customers, are they able to download their videos? My clients are able to download the photos without a problem, but they are not able to download the videos. I do not want to give them access to all the videos in order to be able to download their video, if that makes sense. Okay, so this is a, a complicated question. Let me answer it with what I would recommend. If you want to give anybody downloads for anything for free, I never recommend doing it through the access, okay? So what I mean by that is let's just say that this is a video or this is a these are videos or these are photos, right? And we want to let our clients go in there and download those for free. I do not recommend, sorry, these, I do not recommend going into that gallery, going to access, going to downloading, and turning on the downloading. I would almost always, always, always tell you to disable this downloading feature and never use it. Doesn't matter if you wanna give everybody the downloads for free, I would almost always tell you to never use this. And the reason that I say that is because this lets people download the files that you've uploaded without agreeing to anything, without any kind of restriction at all, okay? What I recommend doing is making your downloads free with a coupon, because you can create coupons that make digital products free you can make them free up to a certain amount. You can make them free for a number of videos or a number of, of downloads, and then after that they have to pay. The reason that I recommend going that route is because it gives you some control. It also gives you the ability to track that stuff, right? So if people are downloading just using the access, really all the information that you can see is that it's been downloaded. You have no idea who's downloading it or anything like that. When you use digital products, it actually is seen as an order. So you can see who downloaded it, when they downloaded it, how many times they downloaded it, if they actually downloaded it or just purchased it as a digital download and used the coupon to make it free, you can track that information. You can track that stuff. You can give, let's say you shoot weddings and part of your wedding package is that the bride and groom gets to download all of the photos and the videos for free, but maybe, 
You don't want every single person downloading all of that for free. That's where a digital coupon, a coupon comes into play because you can say, okay, go in your gallery, select the down the digital products, and then you're gonna go check out. And then when you go check out, enter this coupon, it's gonna make it free for you. And then once your bride and groom use that coupon, then um, then it's going to expire and they can't share it with their mom and their dad and, and Aunt Susie and their best friend. And and that way, not everybody that you intended to not get the downloads for free are getting that for free. So I would always say use a coupon. Um, really quickly, how you do a coupon is if you go up here to selling right here and you can go to coupons and campaigns. And this is going to be so variable depending on how you have things set up. So I'm just going to try to show you really quickly in general. Go to add new coupon. And then you can create one that people can use over and over again. Or let's say in the situation that I just said, let's say that we only want our bride to download the photos and the videos for free. Anybody else that comes in there needs to pay. Right. So in that case, we're going to do an individual coupon. We'll call this bride uh, free, whatever. And then coupon code is what you're going to be sending out to your clients. So I'm just going to say free uh, down, whatever you want to put here. Come down here to coupon value, currency, select your currency. We're going to say discount products. And then for this type of coupon, you're going to have it be an amount coupon. And then this is where you have to do some math. Okay, so if you have two digital products created, one is a full gallery download where they can download all of the photos. And then one is a digital video download where they can download all of the videos. And let's say for each one of those, you wanted somebody who was supposed to pay for those to pay $300 a piece. So you're gonna go here to amount and you're gonna say, okay, this amount, this coupon is worth $600. Then you're going to come down here and say this can only be used on digital downloads and it can only be used in this specific gallery. Let's say that that's the, their wedding gallery. All right. And then you can come here and really important, make sure that you give this a one time use. Save this. You send that coupon code to the bride. She can go in there. She uses that. She gets to download her videos and her photos for free. She can't give that coupon to mom because it's already expired now that she's used it. Anybody else that comes into that gallery is now going to have to pay. Now, if you're not sure how to set up digital products, if you're not sure how to do all those coupons, there are lots of videos on our channel. So you're going to want to look for anything that goes through the process of creating digital products. There are videos on our channel that cover that. And then you're also going to be looking at... Um, how to give downloads for free. So there's videos that cover that whole process in very great detail, but really, really good question, uh, Natasha. Hopefully that gave you a really good place to start. Um, and as always, guys, if you guys need help with anything, don't wait till you're frustrated. Don't wait till you're confused and you're just like, oh, I, I can't deal with this. We have a chat team here for a reason and they love you guys. So if you have that chat option, click that chat. You can reach out to our support team. Guys, they are the most hands down amazing group of people I've ever had the privilege to work with. They love helping you guys. Um, and they are all either in North Carolina, where am I? I'm at. And then we have two people up in Maine. And again, they are amazing. So, um, if nothing else, if you've never used the chat, click on that chat today and just say hi. Um, and then make sure you guys give them a thumbs up and give them a chat reward because they work really hard to help you guys and they love helping you guys. So make sure you say hi and check out that chat. All right, uh, let me get back to my dashboard here really quick. For my photos page, I call it the dashboard, but we're gonna go back to the photos page. We've got like eight minutes left. Let me see if I can answer a one, at least one more question. Uh, all right, so let's see. Uh, next question, can I create a coupon that discounts items if they buy in bulk? For example, one to four digital images are $20 an image, five to nine images are $18 an image, 10 plus images are $15 an image. So you can't, you can't really create a tiered coupon. This is going to be more along the route of how do you have your digital products set up? Right. So really quickly, I'll just show you if you go into selling and uh, and actually and selling right here and you go to digital products. You're going to go add product and and you can't really create this to where it's going to tier 
on how many digital downloads they actually purchase. But you can say, if you buy one to four images, right, it's gonna be $20 an image. So you're gonna create a digital product. Let me get back here. I don't know if I have time to get through this. Add product. And then we're gonna create the first one, right? Which is a digital download. So we'll just say single image download. All right, I'm gonna leave all of this stuff the same. I'm not gonna break this down. Guys, go watch the video tutorial, how to sell digital images. It will walk you through this entirely. I'm just gonna show you how to set up this for this specific question. So this is a single image download. Number of items required for the product. One, meaning they have to pay per image. Then we're gonna go down here to the bottom. And then what we're gonna do is create one for the one to four images really quick. So we're gonna go add digital products. And we're gonna say four digital downloads. We're gonna leave everything the same. We're just gonna change the number of items required. I'm gonna go ahead and set the minimum and maximum to four. It's not gonna let them check out unless they have four. Then we're gonna go down here, click save. Now that we have those set up, it's putting them on a price list and pricing them, right? So let me get that question out of the way. So if you go to selling and price list, you're just gonna set up the price list to reflect that price that you wanted. So if we go here and I just call this digital downloads, or you might want to add it to an existing price list if you already have one. You're going to go add products, click up here, go to your studio name. That's where your downloads will be. And then here are these two that I created. And so for a single image download, it's going to be $20 per image. You put it right here. And then um, you said for one to four, we'll just say for four digital downloads, we want to give them a break and maybe make it only uh, $10 per image. So that's where you're going to set that four digital downloads to be $40. And so you don't really need a coupon. You just need to structure your digital products in this manner so that they kind of get that tiered discount. Great question though. Really great question. Lots of people ask about that. All right. Let me go back to photos really quick. And then let's see. Let's see if there is a question that I can answer in five minutes. Um, all right, so next question here. I ran a site analysis and it said I was missing the H1 tags. How do I add that to my pages? Guys, so this stuff is pretty much already built into your Zenfolio account. It does depend on what layout you're, you're using, right? But um, again, if you make sure that you're titling things correctly, like as far as your site menu items, you'll have your uh, website title set up, this information should already be in your account. So one of the things I would caution you about is there are lots of those scammy things where they'll email you and they'll say, hey, I ran an analysis on your site and it's performing really badly for this. If you wanna pay me this much money, I'll fix it for you, right? Or I get the calls every day where somebody's like, I will help you get to number one on Google. Guys, you have to remember that a lot of these people are just looking for money. Okay, now, I'm not saying everybody's like that. I'm just saying that a lot of those people are just looking for money. They found your business listing and they're trying to get money out of you, All right? But a lot of this stuff is already built in for you on Zenfolio. Now to answer that specific question on how do you add your H1 tags, that depends on the layout that you're using in Zenfolio. So whatever layout you use, there's different things that reference the different H1 tags. And so it's hard for me to tell you exactly how to do that. But what I will say is just making sure that you title things correctly. You make sure you title them well. One of the things that you wanna make sure that you do is hover over your um, name right up here. Okay, go to account because a lot of times whenever you first start your account, we set some things up and then we never go back and revisit them. So go into your account settings, go down here and you're gonna go to website and then go to search engine optimization. And then just read this stuff that you have in here. Like, look, obviously I have very little information in here. This stuff is important to SEO as indicated by the green SEO tag. Make sure that you go revisit this and that you add more information into this because when I created the account, probably just like you, I was in a hurry. I wasn't thinking about these things. I just 
wanted to get in and get something set up and start playing around, right? And then I never went back and revisited this. So make sure that you go back here as well. You revisit this and you put some good information in here and that's gonna help your SEO as well. All right, guys, like two minutes left. Uh, I don't think I can, oh, I can, I can do one more question. So one more question. Let's grab this question really quick. Uh, here we go. Can I create an email address connected to my domain name through you? So this is a really quick answer. Zenfolio is not a domain registrar. We can't give you an email address with your domain. Wherever you purchased your domain and wherever you have it hosted, that's gonna be who you need to contact about getting an email address set up for your uh, domain. So if you have like, um, I don't know, uh, natashakiri.com and you've got it purchased through GoDaddy and you want to have your email as natasha at natasha natashakiri.com hopefully I'm saying your name right Natasha if not like you can totally make fun of me in the chat um, but you're going to want to contact GoDaddy or whoever your domain is purchased through to actually set that email address up unfortunately like I said we are not a domain registrar we can't set you up with an email or anything like that that's going to be all where you purchased your domain through all right, guys, that is about it for the time that we have today. So I do want to say thank you so much to all of you guys who came and hung out with us today. Hopefully this information was really helpful for you guys. Uh, let's see. Let's really quick. Let me shout some of you guys out. Gene, Sharks408, Dwayne Ellis, John McCormick in the house. Uh, let's see who else we got. Natasha, Katie was hanging out with us today. Always love having Katie hang out with us. Um, and let's see, forever more photos. Uh, let's see who else we got. All right. So I think that's everybody. Thank you guys again so much for hanging out. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure that you click that subscribe button guys. We do live streams twice a week. Every Tuesday we do site reviews starting in March. Those are going to be much, much better. You guys, I'm really excited about that. I hope you guys are as well. It's going to be a lot of fun, but every Tuesday we do site reviews and then every Thursday, like today we do Zenfolio live. Don't forget, tomorrow is Valentine's Day, you guys. Just, again, a friendly reminder for all of those guys out there or gals who have a significant other who might have let it slip their mind. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Hey, hope you guys have a wonderful week. Make sure that today, tomorrow, this weekend, sometime that you help somebody, that you encourage somebody, that you go out and you show some people some kindness and that we all work together to make the world a better place. Hope you guys have a wonderful and safe weekend. I'll see you guys again next week.